So this is something that's perhaps a little bit surprising for a number of reasons, but it appears like former President Donald Trump just agreed with Joe Biden on a crucial issue. So take a look. This is from the New York Post. Former President Donald Trump blasted President Biden for pushing the deadline to withdraw all U.S. troops from Afghanistan to September 11th. I don't agree with that framing, as you'll see in a second. Saying it, quote, should remain a day of reflection and remembrance. Trump argued in a statement Sunday that the U.S. can and should pull out the final 2,500 troops ahead of the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. Quote, September 11th represents a very sad event and period for our country and should remain a day of reflection and remembrance, honoring those great souls we lost, he said. Here's the, the key part. Quote, getting out of Afghanistan is a wonderful and positive thing to do. Trump urged Biden to keep as close as possible to his own goal of getting the troops out on May 1st. I made early withdrawal possible by already pulling much of our billions of dollars of equipment out and, more importantly, reducing our military presence to less than 2,000 troops from the 16,000 level that was there. Okay, so there's a lot to say about this. Um, first of all, Trump is, he's already misstating it because his plan, as I've already outlined for all of you, is not, was not to remove literally all of the troops by May 1st. The plan was basically to remove all the combat troops, the so-called boots on the ground, by May 1st, and there would still be a presence of thousands of U.S. personnel on the ground. So, that's why I blasted him. It wasn't really a withdrawal. It was a withdrawal in the same way that Obama withdrew from Iraq, which was to take out the combat troops, but still leave some boots on the ground, and then inevitably he sent more people back in. So what you've had under three administrations now is this yo-yoing of the troop levels. George W. Bush went in. There was no pretense even about leaving. He just kept us there, no question, his entire time in office. Obama came in. He campaigned on getting out of Afghanistan. He didn't do that. Oh, I'm sorry. He campaigned on getting out of Iraq. And he didn't do that except temporarily, but it wasn't a full withdrawal. Then he sent troops right back in. Um, and Obama did the surge in Afghanistan, which is the polar opposite of getting out. He <laughs> sent way more troops to Afghanistan. Now, in the case of Trump, Trump the entire time was talking about getting out of the Middle East, getting out of Iraq, getting out of Afghanistan. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. The closest he came was this deal, which was to get the boots on the ground troops out by May 1st, but it still leaves a presence of thousands, so I don't give him credit for that. I don't think that's a real withdrawal. And by the same token, if Biden gets out by not actually getting out and keeping some boots on the ground, keeping some U.S. personnel there, I'm not going to give him credit for that. So we'll have to wait and see, um, but, so he's misstating it, but the crucial part is, again, I want to read this because this is amazing to me, getting out of Afghanistan is a wonderful and positive thing to do. That's Donald Trump giving Joe Biden credit on something, even though he's, you know, he's saying, oh, how dare you push the date back, how dare you do it on... 9-11, that's so disrespectful, whatever, blah, blah, blah. This is Donald Trump struggling to come up with something to attack Joe Biden on. So basically, even in his condemnation of Joe Biden, he's like, and by the way, this is a positive thing to do, this is the right thing to do, and you should do it. That's incredible. That's incredible. So, I mean, there's a number of potential takeaways from this. It depends how much you want to read between the lines, but one reading of this is... Just like we've talked about a number of times, it really does appear like Trump's instinct was, I do want to get out of the Middle East, but every time he went to go do it, like he says, there'd be somebody right out of central casting, a general right out of central casting, would come in wearing his uniform and say, Mr. President, we can't do it for reasons X, Y, and Z, and Trump would be like, okay, you know better than me, I guess I'll defer to your wisdom. And that's what kept happening, but guess what? That's what happened in Vietnam as well. We stayed there way longer than we should have, and all the generals said we need more time and more money, and every president gave them more time and more money, and then at the end, it was a mess, and we ended up leaving, and we didn't accomplish, accomplish what we wanted to accomplish. Even though, again, they don't even bother to define victory at this point. So, I think his instinct really was, I want to get out, but he was convinced by intelligence agencies and the Pentagon and generals and basically, not, I don't mean this in a conspiratorial sense, but the deep state, the people who are there from administration to administration, they convinced him, no, you can't get out. And he kind of went along with them. And so now, that's the other point. He might actually be having like a, 
a moment here where he's like, damn it, why didn't I do exactly what it says Biden's going to do? Now, again, we don't know for sure if Biden's actually going to get out, and I got more stories on that coming up, but if Biden actually gets out, it really does appear like Donald Trump is like, God damn it. See, now Biden's going to get the credit for this because Trump knows that pulling out of Afghanistan is incredibly popular. All the polls show it. Biden's going to get credit for this. Why didn't I do it? Which leads to my biggest point on this, which is, yes, Don, what the hell? You're giving him credit. You're saying it's the right thing to do. You had the opportunity. You didn't have to, you didn't even have to make a deal. That's another thing that Biden said, which we hope he follows through on. But he said, um, there are no conditions on the ground that have to be met. We're getting out no matter what. It's an unconditional withdrawal. You could have done that, Don. You could have done that. Instead, I love this idea. He negotiated with the Taliban. Imagine if a Democratic president negotiated with the Taliban, what Republicans would say. Oh my God, you're working with the Taliban. You're holding their hand and they're on the side of Al-Qaeda and they're terrorists and they're evil and you want to work with evil? You can't work with evil. This is like appeasing Hitler. How could you do it? That's what they would say. But Trump worked with them and it was, they didn't say anything. But yes, Don, you didn't have to negotiate with the Taliban. You didn't have to have a timeline for withdrawal. You could have just pulled all the troops out and done it right now. And over, you know, you could override the generals. You're the commander in chief. You're the president of the United States. But he didn't do it. But he didn't do it. So instead, now Biden does it. And he's like, OK, all right, even though I don't know about the time and everything. But I mean, it is, what, what am I going to say? It is the positive. It is a positive thing to do. And it's the right thing to do. By the way, Lindsey Graham came out after he saw Trump's statement on this and Lindsey Graham didn't take the headlines at their word. He read what Trump actually said. And so Lindsey Graham read it actually in a similar way to how I'm reading this, which is he's really large. He's largely agreeing with Biden and giving him credit. And so Lindsey Graham launched an attack against Trump. It was like, oh, I, with all due respect to the former president, it's not a good thing to give terrorists safe haven to attack the United States of America. As if that's like, as if that's what's happening here. What's happening here is we've been at a, a, an illegal war for 20 years. That's what's happening. And we've wasted so much time, so much money, so many lives, U.S. soldiers' lives and civilian lives over there. We have the Afghanistan papers that came out, which showed immense, tremendous corruption and a totally aimless war. And Lindsey Graham, I want you to overlook all that, because something, something, 9-11, something, something, bad guys and terrorists. I mean, for the love of God, man, if you want to stop terrorists from existing, attacking us, and all that, don't arm them and fund them and support them as we've been doing. We give money and weapons to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia arms jihadists on the ground in Yemen who are fighting the Shia Houthis that are in the government. We give, you know, arms and funding to al-Nusra on the ground in Syria. That's an al-Qaeda affiliate. If you want terrorism to stop, stop funding it and arming them. That's what you do. But they're not going to do that. Because that it, Lindsey Graham's totally in favor of all those things, but he wants to pretend like the real problem is if we pull out of Afghanistan, then it's going to lead to the attacks against us. No, if anything, us being there led to a bigger threat of attacks against us. And this isn't me speaking. This is, you know, the more honest elements of our intelligence agency speaking because of this thing called blowback, unintended consequences of an interventionist foreign policy. So Lindsey Graham is attacking Trump. Virtually all the Republicans you know, on record. I haven't heard Rand Paul say anything anti-war on this, agreeing with Biden yet. But all the Republicans are attacking Biden, and by extension, Trump. But listen, if he follows through, massive, massive credit. Massive credit to Biden. But we have to wait and see. Because there's been a number of times, a number of head fakes, a number of balks on getting out of Afghanistan, and also a lot of trickery. Where they say we get out and they leave a certain number of troops in. That was That's what Trump was planning on doing. So and that's what his deal was, effectively. So we'll see. We'll see. But never thought I'd see even like the, it's not in Trump's nature to ever give any credit to his political enemies. But this is the closest we're ever going to get. This is really Trump agreeing with Biden. Quote, getting out of Afghanistan is a wonderful and positive thing to do. Right. So why didn't you do it? Why didn't you do it? And don't give me this bullshit that you did because you didn't. I read the terms of the May 1st deal. You still kept some troops there. He still kept some U.S. personnel there. So you didn't do it. You could have done it. You could have done it unconditionally. You didn't do it. And now you look like an idiot. And so you're trying to scramble with something to attack Biden on, even though you're largely agreeing with him. And you say, bah, dip, uh, the timeline, something, 9-11's a holy day, whatever. Uh, don't forget, guys, give me credit. I love how every statement Trump comes out with 
effectively boils down to that. Hey, don't forget, give me credit. That's what this line was. I made early withdrawal possible. Early withdrawal after 20 years. <laughs> Early withdrawal, my ass cheeks, son. I made early withdrawal possible by already pulling uh, much of our billions of dollars of equipment and more importantly, reducing our military presence to less than 2,000 troops from the 16,000 that was there before. So again, he wants credit for the reduction of troop levels. I don't give you credit for that and I don't give Obama credit for that because Obama did the same shit. After the surge, he pulled, him, <laughs> he pulled him out down to a certain level. There were still troops there. Same in Iraq. Pulled him out, sent him back in, pulled out more. It was the yo-yo effect. I don't give you credit for the yo-yo effect because you just leave the door open for somebody to raise it again. You got to get out completely. So anyway, um, it, fascinating story either way because this is the closest you're going to get to Trump giving credit to Biden. He's kind of doing it here.